pledge is a natural treat. And for when you are gardening with hope. Hi, I'm Hope Merkel from Los Osos Valley Nursery. I'm going to show you how to make an absolutely incredible living sphere. This, these green moss spheres are made by brawn and you should be able to pick up either a small, medium, or large size under $25 and they're absolutely fabulous and you should be able to find some at your local nursery. So to get started making our moss spheres that we got from Braun, we're just, they're so easy. They're already pre-filled, they're pre-made. All you need to do is soak them. If you're going to use them indoors, I would soak them in something like VF11 or Fox Farm Grow Big. Um, an organic fertilizer, something uh, just to add a little bit of food value to the inside and to keep them wet. Then, if you're going to do them outside, you could do something even like a fish emulsion solution, um, just a tablespoon to a gallon of any brand. Soak them until they're thoroughly wet. They'll be quite heavy. Pull them out, they'll drain off, and then they'll just be lightly moist. Later to water, you're just going to hose them down and the water will absorb inside. And then we're going to go ahead and cut cuttings of any of our favorite succulents. I've got some grappa petalum, got the uh, aeonium, Schwarzkopf, and I've just gone ahead and cut a nice stem. And then I'm going to uh, let them dry for about a day or two. I just put them in my little cardboard box, cut them, leave them in the garage if you're in a really cold area or just outside on the counter, anywhere. You want this end to scab over and this will help the plant release a hormone that'll cause it to root out better. If you just cut and plant, a lot of times you can, you can get rot. And so now we'll get started. What I'll be doing with the sphere is I'm just going to take a screwdriver. You could even use a closed pair of clippers. You could use chopsticks, anything that's going to give you a sharp end to poke into the sphere. Uh, the sphere is made with moss string. I believe there's a wire form inside, then filled with dirt. And so basically we need to get through this moss into the dirt to allow our plant to root out. Going to use some different colored uh, grays, reds, dark greens. I've got some jades. I've got some sedums, and you could really get creative. You could use all the same if you had, you know, jade grows big. People have that readily available to them in most areas, and so even just an all gray, all jade sphere is beautiful. So, I'm going to have cut all my my cuttings the day before and then it's just kind of adding your own artistic flair. I think I'm going to kind of do a layered uh, spiral theme with this. So I'll go through and give the plant a little bit of room to grow and to be placed. I'm going to poke my hole which is actually quite easy to get through. About an inch or two apart. Big enough for my root section to go in. And then it's just placing them in there. And that's about it. And so you can shorten or lengthen your pieces as needed. Um, good to get an idea the day before you do it on, on how long. Like that's a little long, but it would actually work. I try to keep them between two and three inches long. I'll use screwdrivers because it's actually a little easier for me. An extra, you can pull off a few of the leaves. Save those because on grappa petalum they will regrow and that'll make you a new little plant. There we go. And then you can kind of just squeeze the moss back around it. And then you'll give it, these already have been laying long enough that they've actually rooted. And so those will take root really quickly. I'm just going to put those inside. And then I can always fill in with some, some other colors up on top. 
You can go back and fill in your spaces with smaller varieties like the sedums and the jades. If you run into that wire or that's inside, just move it over a little bit. You can work on it from both the bottom and the top. Uh, that makes it really easy. You could almost do a face. <laughs> um, really cute. So then after you get it hung and rooted, um, you're going to want to let it kind of root for a couple weeks. Uh, you could even set it if, you're, if your cuttings are really heavy, like the jade. But you can put lighter ones down below. And I think I do want. I do some of my lighter rootings towards the bottom. You could also do a few, uh, you could do ivy in these. You could also do something that's going to trail so that you get the long kind of ribbon trailing down. I can do. And I could also, if you need to, you could put a little, just to hold those in, a little paper clip, fold it up, taking a small paper clip, unfolded it to make a little U-hook. You could also use if you have little florist hooks in green or if you have bobby pins, those would work too. And those back, and that's going to hold my piece all the way in to where it can root. Stick it. Just give it a little extra push. And ta-da, we'll keep that going. So I'm just gonna use a nail. You could use um, a pin, um, anything that's gonna give you about the same diameter as your little root cutting. And that way you won't have too large of a hole and it won't fall out. So I'll go back through my smaller spots and just go through and fill with my little cuttings to add texture. There's all different colors. Um, we could use some of the gold Angelina. Really gives some nice color to this. These would also be great at Christmas instead of doing, well, you could do mistletoe and just poke them in as well, but what a neat uh, idea. You could make it a kissing ball. It would work and just continue on until it's completely filled. So you could do ivy, but you can also do bromeliads. And these are becoming ready available at most nurseries. They, bromeliads are a special class of plant. They don't actually get nutrients from the roots. They get nutrients from the hairs on their stems. And so they basically use their roots to hold on to whatever they're growing on. So with these reeds, you would get them wet let them drip drip out a little bit and then you would either go ahead and just poke a hole like we did with the succulents and you could even do a succulent bromeliad combo because they grow very well together these work great as house plants uh, very low maintenance a little watering maybe once every couple of weeks if you're in a very humid area you wouldn't even need to worry about it or you can just basically set that stem down inside you don't want them to stay wet, wet, but just mildly wet. And then you would just go ahead and poke that in. Now the really cool thing with bromeliads is if they don't really have a whole lot of a root system or anything that you can poke in, you actually get just a little bit of hot glue. I like to put a little hot glue on the moss, count to maybe three seconds just to let it cool off ever so slightly, and then go ahead and set your bromeliad on that and the hot glue you're gluing it actually to that little root section and then you could add shells to that um, really make something fabulous and remember that these will multiply and they will grow just get absolutely gorgeous after they finish flowering you cut the flowers off the mother plant will then pop out and get larger and then her pups will flower and so year-round you can keep them keep them going uh, light fertilizer with just um, 
Oh, I would I would use it uh, liquid houseplant fertilizer at about one quarter the regular strength, and that will keep them going really nicely. There, I've added a few bromeliads to our succulent wreath for an absolutely incredible living sphere. And these you should be able to pick up uh, for about under $25 and they come in a small, medium and a large size. They're absolutely fabulous. You can miss these maybe once a week and have something as a treasure. Whoa.